What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Hopefully you had a good weekend overall. Had some fun here. Did the spawn cast of course. Took a look at a game on the eShop that's charging for save files. And I spent some time working on a video I think some of you guys will enjoy as we're going to build a Super Nintendo classic looking Raspberry Pi classic system. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, check for that video later on today. We should have that up for you guys. If you're interested, it should be pretty good time checking that out. We have a lot of stuff to get into and then some smaller stuff as well. If you're a Best Buy customer, you probably noticed uh, going around the internet while well, they're talking about how the membership, the Gamers Club, looks to be ending. Or at least it's kind of ended, but everybody who's a current member is grandfathered in until their plan runs out. Now, if you're not aware of what this was, if you were a uh, GCU or a Gamer Club holder for the card, you'd go in and you'd get 20% off of new releases. So instead of $60, it would be $48. They also had different deals on things like Amiibos or other accessories with controllers and other games at times too. That appears to be ending though. Best Buy seems to be done with that. I didn't think it would last forever, obviously. They would get rid of it at one at some point. It was definitely to generate traffic for other things that they were selling, TVs, just everything, headphones. They sell a lot of stuff in there that they make more money on than video games. So discount the video games, which people come in to buy, and then they'll buy other stuff on top of that to get you more money. Seems like they were either losing too much money or they just don't need it anymore or they're just moving to something else. Either way, if you're a member now, just be ready. When that plan is up, it's gone for good, and that's kind of it. Also, what was very interesting was we got to look at some unreleased Pokemon from the original 151. Now, if you're, of course, uh, maybe you're around at the time when Blue and Red came out, uh, it was very new to us, and all the Pokemon that we saw then was brand new, and we didn't really know what we missed out on. Well, now we look back on it, and over on Twitter, you're going to see some of the pictures here. A Pokemon designer by the name of James Turner shared these from the original plans, and some of them look okay. There's one in particular that everybody pointed out as being absolutely terrifying with their wide, massive eyes staring directly at you, almost looking into your, your soul. I feel like Pokemon would have been rated at like mature if that Pokemon was in there, because that would have terrified terrified everyone <laughs> but they showed some some interesting ones off and they also talked about how they got inspiration for fan art and stuff like that going forward so it was pretty cool to see something uh behind the scenes almost a, i guess a director's cut of some of the pokemon that we missed out on and then GameSpot found a very interesting job listing. Now, we know what happened with Visceral Studios, right? Either they uh, they weren't doing the kind of game EA wants, which I think we all know. They, they want big open world, uh, uh, these big, big games that can be games as a service that they can technically monetize over time. Sounds like Visceral was making a game like an Uncharted or even a God of War, you could say, where it had a definitive start an endpoint, and that's it. And they probably didn't like that. They shut them down, and then they pulled the project. Well, after finding a, a job listing, GameSpot may have stumbled across what they are working on with that Star Wars game, what they have probably turned it into, and that appears to be an open-world game. Now, the job listing that GameSpot describes says they, want, they need someone who can lead a team to deliver online features for a Star Wars open-world project. So, as most of us expected, they would have taken that narrative-driven story that we kind of saw from Visceral, turned it into a big open world, and kind of just put it out there for us to buy. I guess like, I guess kind of like, even like in Assassin's Creed, how we've seen that become very, very open world, and Watch Dogs, of course. These games as a service games work well for these bigger companies who don't want to develop games constantly. They can monetize each game, con like, across the board pretty much and that's that's what they want they they're not in the business of selling consoles like sony and nintendo and even microsoft which should be so they're not making these games that don't have these kind of benefits to them like a single player story nintendo and, and sony specifically those two are mostly in the business of selling their systems with single player experiences that are worth buying the system for mario odyssey zelda uh, god of war uh, last of us 2 these are the games spider-man that, that are gonna be pushing people towards that so that's all the, the smaller news today, guys. Still have a bunch of stuff to get into, including some mysterious statues that are showing up over in Brazil, guys. So let's get started. Now we're going to start today with Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I, the reason it says Kingdom Hearts 3 is real in the title is because originally a lot of people were still looking at this. It says 2018. Okay, all this stuff. Kingdom Hearts 3 has kind of been a legend for a long time now. We heard about it a long time ago and didn't hear much else, right? We saw some gameplay and that was it. It was gone, more gameplay. Okay, and a lot of people, of course, look at Square and say, I guess your games will come out sometime this century. Well, what's interesting about Kingdom Hearts 3 is they had a whole event where they invited a bunch of people out, including press, even YouTubers. HMK went there. It was pretty cool to see that. And uh, a lot of people went out there and they actually played 
the game. Yes, it's happening. Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out. It is real. And they also let people know that they're going to be announcing the release date early next month. So in June, which seems to line up, I think, with E3, that's more than likely when they will announce it. Square, of course, is having their whole event. I feel like that's going to be a part of it. That's a big announcement. I'm thinking November. I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess, say second week in November. That's a game they can put out whenever they want, and they'll get the same sales they would anywhere else. So like something like a Red Dead Redemption 2 won't affect the sales of Kingdom Hearts. Really, no other game will. The fan base wants this game desperately. I played Kingdom Hearts 2 back when the 360 first launched on the PS2. It came out a month after the 360 launched, and it, it's insane to think it's been this long. A lot of other games come out, but still, it's insane. They played two different uh, scenarios, it looked like, is what they were playing. One took place in the Toy Story world, the other one took place in Olympus with Hercules, and it looked pretty cool. I mean, we saw a lot of it already with Toy Story and everything, but the fact that people were actually playing through it, and, and actually, you know, like going from start to finish, it was like 10 minute level, a 15, 20 minute level, it, it was pretty cool to see this actually playable because that gives me a lot of faith that it is coming out in 2018 and most of the Kingdom Hearts fans will be able to enjoy this game this year. We'll just have to keep an eye out at E3, probably the Square, en Square Enix event where they will show us the release date. Next up, let's talk about Forza Horizon 4, a game that we all know is coming, right? Like it, this, isn't, this isn't a secret. Even though they haven't really announced it, we know it's showing up. That's like the pillars of Microsoft. Obviously, they have Gears of War, they have Halo, and they have Forza. So Horizon, Forza Horizon series is one that I like because it's more arcadian in nature and it's a lot of fun. So it's really cool to hear about the next one coming out, Forza Horizon 4, although Walmart was telling us they're just skipping it. So maybe it is Forza Horizon 5 and they'll throw us that curveball. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but no, Forza Horizon 4 is coming. We'll get it announced at E3. That's clear. Maybe they'll roll another car out onto the stage or something. I don't know. But what's interesting is we did get get quite a few alleged leaks of concept art and you're gonna see some of them here there were quite a few of them and it seems like the leaks appear to be pointing to Hong Kong uh, listen we've heard a lot of rumors about where this thing's taking place we've heard the UK we've heard Japan Japan actually would have been really cool by the way to see that but Hong Kong is also very interesting now what's been very very fascinating about these leaks is these apparently are being linked to Leading Light Design, which is a company that specializes in developing concept arts and production designs for TV and video games. So this seems like it is kind of linking up to this actually being real, but I always tell people, listen, you gotta wait till A3. We know Forza Horizon 4 is coming. They haven't said it, it's, come on, it's, it's happening. The real question now is where it's gonna take place. I like the idea of Hong Kong. It, the, the concept world looks great. I think it'd be really cool kind of exploring that area. I think Japan should be on the docket for a Horizon at some point. But hey, Hong Kong is at least different enough, I think, to be interesting for a lot of Forza fans. Also, even if it's not super interesting to you, it'll probably be on Game Pass, right? Everything's going to Game Pass, so, uh, you can just download it and try it out. Why not? I mean, it's going to be there for you anyway. So that's one of the things I like about all of Microsoft's announcements is I have Game Pass, so I basically already have the game. Next up, let's talk about these mystery Pokemon statues that are showing up in Brazil. You're going to see some of them here, and there are quite a few of them that have been showing up over the past couple months. And this is actually in Cezano, Brazil. This was sent over to me by a viewer by the name of uh, Fabio Alves. And I saw these, and I was like, whoa, those look really cool. These must be some, like promotional stuff that maybe they're doing for maybe like a Pokemon Go or something. It doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. It kind of is and it's kind of not. See, over on different places like Reddit, everyone's been discussing this and this appears to be something that has been ongoing and it seems to be linked to Pokemon Go. For example, on the Bulbasaur Community Day, someone put a Bulbasaur statue out. Uh, when Mew got released, someone put a Mew statue out and it's very very interesting to see these because these statues look like professionally done. Um, it, it's crazy. Even one of them apparently was like vandalized and people cleaned it off. This is really cool to see this. I No one seems to know who's doing this. People seem to think that it's someone who's really into the Pokemon Go community or just into the game and they're kind of celebrating it with these statues. I think that's a great idea. That is so neat to see. I, I think some people are also linking this to like the Pokemon game coming out on the Switch. This appears to be something for uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, but it, it's still, it's, it's so cool to see. The statues look 
so detailed though and so like they even have like um a little little trainer tips like dialogue thing down there next to it um with like text and everything so this is kind of cool let me know what you guys think about these statues and what what's what pokemon do you think is showing up next which one do you think they have in mind for the next pokemon that would show up or which one would you like to see kind of done in this is really really cool statue over in brazil or would you like to see people other places start to do it as well maybe make it like a massive community thing where these just show up and no one ever finds out who's doing it. I really like the idea of kind of like that that uh, that quiet release of statues and we just, no one can figure out who's dropping them places. <laughs> Finally, in our last bit of news, I wanna talk about the NPDs. If you don't know, these are of course the chart, sales charts for gaming and it usually is for physical media, although they do throw some digital media in there as well. Now we are gonna find out officially about them tomorrow. However, over the weekend, it appeared that some were uh, kind of leaked out or just put out intentionally because why not uh, ahead of time. And while there weren't any solid numbers, we did see some at least placement of where the systems came in. Some of them you're gonna expect, right? With the PS4 and God of War just crushing it. That makes sense. But here are some of the alleged leaks for these. Now we're gonna, again, Matt's gonna tell us about them tomorrow, but here we go. This is from Magic Pork. They have done this before and they had everything lined up before as well. And you're gonna see, this is on Reset Era, by the way, Reset Era. Uh, and you're gonna see the PS4, actually this is in relation to the Switch as the median. So in the, kind of in the middle, the second to the top. Um, that's kind of what they're judging it on. The PS4 selling almost twice as many Switch systems in April. I completely expect the PS4 to explode with God of War as we heard that thing sold what, like three million copies in a hurry, like right away, like so fast. Um, the Switch obviously right there at one, but below that, the Xbox One at 0.79 of the Switch's sales, 3DS at 0.41 of the Switch's sales. That's that's about right, to be honest. The Switch hasn't released any blockbusters, right? They haven't. Uh, DK came out, Tropical Freeze, and that did well enough, which you're gonna which you're gonna hear about here a bit because Magic Pork did tell us the top sellers. This is in uh, this is for April was God of War, no surprise, right? Not at all. Uh, Far Cry Five, Nintendo Labo Toy Con Variety Kit, and then Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. It almost feels like some people are gonna be a, a little surprised with some of these charts now. I have seen this before where they put these out and they just kind of pick and choose where the charts they're pulling these from. For example, they could be pulling um, the, the Labo and Tropical Freeze from Nintendo's charts, right? And they're pulling uh, uh, Far Cry and God of War from the Xbox and the PlayStation charts. That's very possible. So I, I kind of look at this and say, okay, I think the Labo is going to place better than people expect, to be honest, after there's a lot of stuff rolling around about it flopping because of the amount of inventory that it's sold. We don't really know how much they ship though, but I saw that a lot and, and Matt keeps kind of indicating that people are going to kind of have a different viewpoint of things when they do put the actual information out tomorrow. So it's gonna be interesting to see that. God of War, no brainer. PS4, no brainer. We know that's gonna happen. The Xbox at three kind of surprised me a little bit that it's that far behind the Switch, well behind the PS4. This is a massive change. I mean, seriously, the PS4 sold two and a half times more than, than the Xbox One, two. I mean, that, that's a big that's a big difference. That's a big difference. Um, I mean, it was ahead of the 3DS, the Xbox One was, but it, it wasn't as much as I, I, th I thought. That, honestly, the Xbox One would have at least been even or very close to the Switch, but uh, it's, it seems to be pretty far behind there. So we're gonna see though going forward, because this is, this is gonna be the time where I think it's gonna get a little more serious with Nintendo and Sony. Uh, when we get obviously into the fall with things like Spider-Man coming out, we'll see Tomb Raider coming out, that'll help with Xbox sales as well. But uh, then we know, we know Nintendo's bringing Smash and we have a feeling Nintendo's bringing Pokemon. And that's when things are gonna get really crazy. When Pokemon comes out, that's when you're gonna see some big numbers in media crates and you're gonna see some, some chart toppers in the MPDs. And it's gonna be interesting, so we'll set to see. But we will get the actual numbers tomorrow and we'll put those in Newswave for you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for Newswave today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. Really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave a bunch of comments down below about everything we talked about today. Whether it's those mysterious Pokemon statues. Maybe you think it's a group of people putting them together. I mean, you're, you're building these statues out there somewhere. You figure someone would come across it at some point. I guess they don't really pay it any mind if it's like in a backyard and you're just kind of cutting up statues. I, I don't know. But let me know what you think about that, guys. I think it's really cool to see that kind of happening. That community event thing happening there where people are, I guess, someone's bringing out statues and people are admiring them, taking pictures. I think it's a really cool thing to do and I'd like to see that other places but it's gonna be up to people to actually make the statues and you know 
wheel them out <laughs> into the into like the community uh, the community events and everything that they do. It's gonna be really neat to see if they have anything else up their sleeves. There also let me think about the MPDs that we have so far that are alleged leaks. Seems like it's it's about right from what I'm expecting. Obviously, PS4 and God of War massively topping the charts. Again, I'm a little surprised where the Xbox is placing. Everything else, guys, let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.